and the God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So at tonight's selectmen's meeting, what we're going to do first, uh, Mr. Priest, could you um, read um, the statement that you yes. had for us, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a, a quick announcement. Uh, due to the coronavirus, we will be conducting this meeting according to the executive order signed by Governor Baker on March 12th, allowing for this meeting to be closed to the public. We have taken extra me uh, measures and will be monitoring the Facebook live stream brought to the public through BCAT for any public comment where appropriate. We will, as you can see, be practicing safe social distancing during this meeting as well uh, and appreciate all the efforts made by the other boards and committees. We also want to take this time to acknowledge the, de the de dedication to our staff. These past several weeks have been uh, met with great resolve and commitment, each day bringing with it new information and updates, and they continue to rise to the challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Priest. Um, Mr. Sagarino, at this point, um, we'll start with the Board of Health. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight we welcome uh, Dr. Wayne Saltzman, Dr. Ed Weiner from our Board of Health, along with Susan Luminello, our Director of Public Health, uh, for an update uh, to the community. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and, and thank you for the tremendous amount of work you have put in over the last month. Uh, this would certainly be an impossible situation for us if we didn't have your guidance, so I just want to thank you. So I'm not sure who gets, to, gets the mic first, but... <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mr. Chairman. So um, just go right into the statement or whatever you have thank planned you. for us. The three of us would like to speak to the town this evening. And thank you very much for allowing us to be in front of you tonight. Uh, my name is Dr. Ed Weiner, and I'm the chairman of the Burlington Board of Health. As you surely know, we are all in uncharted waters. Every non-essential activity seems to have been canceled or postponed. The schools, the preschools, weddings, religious services, and even funerals have been affected. The Board of Health has not only been working with the police and fire, but with every department, board, committee, and commission within this town. Every department head is and every town employee has been working to maintain services within this municipality, as I'm sure you will talk about this evening. Specifically, I'd like to thank the police chief, the fire chief, the town administrator, Paul Sagarino, <coughs> who I speak to multiple times a day. You don't know the excellence in this room. Thank you, Mr. Sagarino. I also want to thank the Board of Health, its professionals and elected board, and most of all, our Board of Health Director, Susan Luminella, all have worked so hard and tirelessly to keeping all who work and live in Burlington safe. I can't say enough about our Director, Ms. Luminella. All people that I have just mentioned have put in hundreds of hours to do what has to be done to protect this community. And we're all tired, and it's just begun. Many of you and many of us are already frustrated. With everything that we've already done to stay well, I'm asking everybody in the town to please understand that this may only be the start. But we'll get through this crisis. We'll work together to keep everybody safe and well in this town. And we ask you, to be patient, patient with everyone, patient with the Board of Health. We're doing all that we can do to provide you support and the best of services that we can. I'm really proud of this community. I'm so proud of this town and we'll continue to work together with everyone here doing what needs to be done. If you have any questions, feel free to call the Board of Health. Better review our Board of Health website for updates, sometimes multiple upset updates a day. We continue to staff our office and we're there to help. Follow the public health instructions. You probably know them all by heart. You've heard them so many times. We wish you good health and please, 
be with everybody. We're doing the best we can. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wine. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. <coughs> Who would, uh... Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted to provide um, just an update on what we're doing. So as Dr. Weiner said, we are working with all town departments um, to make sure that we're answering everyone's questions. We've been working with town employees to answer their questions and to get them um, the most accurate and up-to-date information that we can. So another thing that we've been doing, we, we do education, but we're also responsible for carrying out the governor's orders and for isolation and quarantine. So we have reviewed the governor's orders as they're coming in. One of the things that I'm sure you're all aware of today is the order today about the um, only the essential services are to remain open. So if anyone has a question regarding what an essential service is, I can go through that with them. Uh, it's a seven page document that's attached to the governor's order about what is and what is an essential service. So I just want to point out a couple of things. Construction work is considered an essential service. So if you are in construction, you're an essential service, and that's for residential construction as well. Um, you, you are expected to go to work, but you need to remember that you want to keep that six foot distancing. So you want to make sure you give yourself enough space and um, make sure you're doing that through the entire work day. Uh, another thing I just wanted to point out um, is that some commercial retail stores, so commercial retail stores that supply essential sectors. So this includes convenience stores, pet supply stores, auto supplies and repair, hardware and home improvement and home appliance retailers. They are considered an essential service. So if anybody has a question, do I fall into that category? If they could call us and let us know because we are taking phone calls from businesses and from the public who are concerned about um, companies or, or organizations that are remaining open. So we will work through that with them. I also wanted to talk a little bit about isolation and quarantine and what that is so everyone understands. Um, we at the Board of Health are required to do what's called contact tracing. So we have our public health nurse working on that and we may need to come um, to call in some MRC nurses to help us out with that. And you know, last resort, we may need to also have our staff working on that. So right now we have our public health nurse who is able to handle the, the cases that we have. But um, if we get any further along and need more help, we'll probably be reaching out to our MRC nurses to help with that. So what happens is if you are feeling sick and you call your health care provider and your health care provider has you tested for COVID-19 and you come out positive, then you will be put under isolation. So that means that you will need to stay home. As soon as that lab result comes in, the Board of Health is notified. So you will get a call from our Board of Health public health nurse and she will start her investigation. And she will ask you questions like, when did you get sick? How long have you been sick? Who, and most uh, especially, who were you around when you were sick? So that's where the contact tracing comes in. So if you are in close contact with someone that's within six feet for 15 minutes or more, then the public health nurse is gonna notify those people and those people will then be put on quarantine. So that quarantine can be two weeks or it could be longer than two weeks. So it dependent, if you're living with the person, then your quarantine might be a little bit longer as if you're not living with them. So we, we reach out to people on isolation and quarantine every day to um, people on quarantine. We monitor their symptoms. People on isolation, we, we see, okay, when are they getting better? And then we make a decision based on CDC guidance and recommendations when someone can come off of isolation and quarantine. Um, so I think that that's, that's, if anybody has any questions, well, I'm here to answer them, but I just kind of wanted to, to give that information. I think out. I just have one question before you. Um, uh, could you once again give us a website or the residents a website 
um, where they can find out whether or not they can or cannot go to work. I'm sure their employees are going to tell you, but you mentioned pet stores, you mentioned uh, auto supply, you mentioned small grocery stores, convenience stores, and, and I'm, I'm sure there's a whole list out there that, so if there's a website that they can get to to look at that. So they can find this document. This is the seven page document as to what's an uh, essential service. Yep. So they can find that on our website. So if you go to burlington.org public health alerts, it's right on that website in red and you can click on that link and you will get this entire document. It can be confusing um, and people don't understand is this what category do I fall under? So that's why I said that they can always feel free to call the Board of Health office and we will get back to them and talk it through with them. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody have a, you have Michael? I, I did. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Susan, thank you. I know, and Dr. Uh, Weiner and Salzman being here tonight. <clears throat> you mentioned you may need to utilize the MRC nurses. What's the MRC? That's our Medical Reserve Corps. Okay. So it's a uh, federally recognized Medical Reserve <clears throat> Corps unit um, that was established many years ago. Um, was it 1980, Ed knows, 86, or? <laughs> yeah, that, we, um, that we established here in Burlington. And we have about 158 volunteers or so. Some of them are nurses. And so we have medical and not a medical people. So if anyone, again, thank you for mentioning that, because if you're a resident and you'd like to become involved, you can go to um, the Board of Health website to get more information, or you can email us at boh at burlington.org and we will give you the information on how to become a volunteer. All our volunteers are pre-quarried and pre-credentialed, so we know what your credentials are ahead of time. So it's, a, you know, it's just a matter of filling out an application, getting quarried. So right now we're not using our volunteers as much, but as this goes on and if there's a vaccine that's developed, we will likely need to tap into our volunteers to get that out to the public. Okay, terrific, thank you. Thank you. If you've ever been to the town flu clinic, a lot of that is uh, yes, practice right. for the medical reserve. So our flu clinic is an emergency dispensing site drill. So we have uh, what's called a emergency dispensing site or EDS plan. And we exercise that plan every year at our flu clinic. And it's there that we like to get together with our community partners and our medical reserve corps uh, volunteers and usually at that event we have about 50 medical reserve corps volunteers who come out and that is just a um, it's a basically a training for how we would do this if we had to vaccinate a large number of people in a certain amount of time right. thank you yeah Jim. thank you mr. chairman oh <coughs> am I no <laughs> can we mr. chairman thank selectman you. Mr. Segrino, my name is Wayne Saltzman. I am an elected member of the Board of Health. I also happen to be a physician. My specialty happens to be geriatrics, and uh, I am saddened to say that the folks for whom I care the most are the ones who are most affected by this disease. So in the interest of um, making sure that our town was as informed, supported, and prepared as possible as an elected member, uh, I thought it important to step up even more. And so as you probably know, I have been to BCAT three times over the past three weeks to give an update to our town via BCAT um, and the B News uh, on what's going on. You know, um, uh, Dr. Weiner, many people don't know, but is a professor of laboratory science. So he understands what is going on behind the scenes as we're investing, as we, as the experts are investigating this illness and the medications that might be appropriate for it. And, um, and I, from the clinical point of view, so we thought it was important to give back that much more to the community. That being said, I didn't have anything prepared, but I can, but as I'm talking about COVID-19 all day long as the clinical lead for occupational health, employee health, and my own institution, um, I have some pretty good pretty good ideas about what you all might want to hear about. So as of this morning, over 370,000 cases, um, active cases being investigated across the world. The United States is third in those active cases, I believe over 40, over 40,000. Um, Massachusetts 
uh, as of this morning, over 600 cases, and we know that five, five folks have died. All counties are involved. The last I knew about, last I saw about Middlesex County specifically, there were 199 cases and one, and one death um, uh, uh, as, of, as of this morning. So, you know, the, the governor has, um, has made what I, what I think is a, as a physician a very wise decision to help suppress and mitigate this, this illness. And the way we do that is to socially isolate people and make sure that they are practicing what we call standard precautions. Um, I'm sure Mr. Runyon understands the term standard precautions from what he does for a living, but that is essentially we want to, we assume that the people around us might be ill and we want to protect ourselves and we want to protect them. So we keep our hands washed or clean. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. You know, um, uh, folks have joked about the fact that after every Board of Health meeting, I always say hand washing, hand washing, hand washing, but the reality is the best way we can prevent the transmission of illness. Um, protecting others from our coughs and our sneezes. Uh, making sure, I'm so happy to see this uh, disinfectant wipe in front of Mr. Sagarino, making sure that the services that we come in contact with on a regular basis are, um, are cleaned. Um, those are the basic things that we can do. Um, my own family, my children have, uh, have been told they had to leave college and so we had to pack them up very quickly and my wife and I are working remotely. That's just the reality, we understand it. Um, as far as testing goes, you know, testing is still, uh, is still confusing to many of us, including me and who is doing testing and who is not doing testing. Essentially, folks are saying now that if you have symptoms, you may be, you should be presumptive COVID positive. If you have, if you have a cough, if you have a fever, um, if you have congestion, if you have a sore throat, if you have a headache, even some gastrointestinal issues that go along with all of that could be part of this. Um, calling your physician is the best thing to do. Your physician will know what to do and if you require testing. For the majority of people we know, 80%, um, staying at home, self-isolating, uh, and letting it run its course is the way to go. Many people say, should I go to the emergency room? And the rule of thumb that we're talking about now is that go to the emergency room if you would have gone to the emergency room otherwise, regardless of COVID-19. Don't think that if you have some symptoms that you should be checked out in the emergency room. The emergency room is going to be dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, don't just walk to your doc into your doctor's office. The primary care offices may have changed their, their ways of seeing folks. Um, Many primary care offices in the community are consolidating because they're not, it's, business, it's not business as usual. Call, call first. Um, these are some of the best things that, that we can do in order to um, man this illness. Thank you. Yeah, no, the, the, the chair, uh, Dr. Weiner reminds me that tomorrow night we are we are setting the example of, of uh, trying to take care of our business remotely. We'll be meeting remotely to take care of Board of Health business. Thank you very much. Can Jane. I ask any, answer any questions from the selectmen? You anything had a I earlier? may have left out or missed or anything? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have a question. I have a comment, a couple of comments. One, I want to thank Susan and her entire staff and the entire Board of Health for their tireless efforts, their rapid response. This is an unplanned event that none of us wanted, none of us want. Uh, we've never dealt with, but the, the Public Health Department and the Board of Health have responded uh, tremendously. And I just want to thank you uh, for all your efforts and, and let you know it's, it's uh, I, I, I know we all appreciate it and uh, I'm sure the residents do as well, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Salzman, in terms of how folks received information, I know that uh, given this unprecedented time, um, they're likely to go just about anywhere that's, that's putting out you know, information. Where, I mean, other than our own site, where can we be directing these folks? So, um, uh, Selectman Priest, thank you for asking that question. Um, the, 
uh, just to repeat, the question is where to get the most accurate information because there's a lot of information coming out there. I read the other day um, online because I'm trying to keep track of information that may not be appropriate and how to help allay concerns around bad information that if you wipe yourself down with sesame oil, you won't get COVID-19. So there's a lot of stuff out there. So let me, let me first say that, um, that Director Luminello and her staff are looking at the, the sources that we consider truth. Truth is the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, cdc.gov, G-O-V. The Massachusetts Department of Public Health which actually gets its information from the CDC, but that's another source of truth. There may be some, um, some nuances on things that Massachusetts is specifically seeing in which they take the CDC information and they, um, and they apply it to what's happening in Massachusetts. The World Health Organization, obviously for understanding what's going on, um, what's going on globally and helping us understand trends or concerns. For example, in China, it was reported that young kids were not as susceptible to COVID-19. And so we went into this thinking we don't, that good, we don't have to worry about the younger, the younger, young adults and children. Well, we know that's not the case. Um, we know it from Italy and we know it from our own experience that kids are being affected um, as well. Older adults, we really have to focus on them and their, and their issues because they are definitely much more um, fragile if they s get this disease, but young, young kids as well. So um, a director is taking this information and putting it into a, um, I guess uh, the fairest term to use is a digestible form so we can, um, we can understand it, but uh, if, um, if people want to know uh, what is truth for them to investigate themselves, the CDC has information for, for consumers, for, for lay public, um, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, the World Health Organization, and I would stop there. Um, I, wouldn't go, uh, I wouldn't go around anything else. Um, uh, you know, when the president makes his, um, his briefs, the, um, the task force brief, Dr. Fauci makes, um, makes an announcement, you know, from the National Institutes of Health, that's a source of truth. But if lay people want to know, I really want to know details, the CDC, Mass Department of Public Health, and the World Health Organization. But I have reviewed, just from a doctor point of view, I've reviewed what, doc, what Director Luminello puts out on the Burlington.org site under public health alerts. It's all the information you need to know. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. Um, so let me just close with this. Um, thank you very much for coming in tonight. This is a huge help for the town. I know you've been on TV three times this week. I've heard about it. Uh, I have not seen it personally. I can't say I've watched it. Um, the information you just passed along to us and the town will be very helpful. So once again, uh, how do you think, thank you guys for putting in the hours you've put in for, the, for this virus that's going around. That's actually becoming quite the epidemic and we don't know what to do. Hopefully people um, watched this and they got a little bit more information that they didn't have prior to. Um, all I can say is thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
I'd like to thank the search committee for all of the assistance they provided in bringing us to this point. Uh, just to point out, the search committee members were Selectman Mirandi, uh, Treasurer Collector Brian Curtin, our Assessor Jim Doherty, uh, Assistant Town Administrator, Town Accountant John Denizio, uh, and David Tate from Ways and Means. Uh, the entire process was overseen and directed by our Human Resource Director, Joanne Faust. Thank you, sir. Um, at this point, what is this is a roll call vote, I'm assuming? Or no? Yeah, discussion, vote, uh, okay. all the votes tonight, uh, Betty's informing, need to be roll call votes. Okay. So at this point, I'll open it up to the board uh, for discussion. Um, Mike? Did, actually, do the people at home know Bob is. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, the, I, hi, Bob. I'm still here. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, 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 I have to apologize, I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. My God. Thank you, Michael. Um, so, Bob, we're going to open this up for discussion on the uh, two interviews we just had. And uh, why don't you go first? <laughs> Remind us you're still here. Uh, I, I'll go first if, if that's all right with everybody. Um, the, the committee has done a great job uh, getting down to these two, two candidates. Um, I... And, and, they're all, you know, I, you know, I just want to be upfront. I've served with Gary for many years. That when I was a department head, he was a member of the um, Board of Selectmen. Uh, and I've seen him uh, as a member of Ways and Means. Uh, but I also note that uh, back in 19, it was either late 1998 or 1999, um, when uh, uh, David Owens left, the town administrator, and before Bob came back on, um, Gary was the chairman of the Board of Selectmen and was the de facto town administrator for a while, and um, he, he carried himself uh, properly. Uh, there was, you know, it, it, everybody felt comfortable that Gary was making the right decisions that were put in front of him as the chairman of the Board of Selectmen uh, during that time. So he does know the town government, even though his, his private work has been in the private sector. Um, I, I feel very comfortable uh, supporting Gary for the, for the many years that I've worked with him. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Michael. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, Burlington uh, has been fortunate to have a number of highly qualified applicants. Uh, seems like whenever we advertise a position, we have no trouble attracting uh, good people, and, and this, is, this is no exception. Um, so I, I think that's all I, I, I have at this point until uh, you're ready to move forward. Okay. Uh, Jim, anything? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, kind of to echo what Chairman uh, uh, Selectman Runyon said is we have a good problem here in Burlington. We attract very good candidates, and there's no difference as with the, uh, this position. We had two extremely qualified candidates. Um, Two who would will make a great treasurer uh, tax collector, no matter where they end up. But um, we have that great problem to have. We have that good problem, and um, I just want to thank the, the members of the uh, subcommittee who did that, the work. Joanne Faust for all her work, and um, I'll just leave it at that at the moment. Thank you, uh, Nick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do agree with what uh, Jim and Mike have said. Um, it's always it's always nice to find yourself in a position of, of having too much of a good thing. <laughs> um, I will say both candidates are coming from different and unique positions. Uh, Alex has spent uh, you know very specific time in Woburn's uh, you know treasure collector's office. Uh, Gary comes with a plethora of uh, managerial experience and, uh, you know, finance background. Um, you know, it's, um, it's very unique. Um, so, you know, I, I guess the question that, you know, we should be asking ourselves is, you know, what does, what does the Burlington Treasurer Collector's Office need for the next five, 10 years? Um, you know, what, what kind of transition do we hope as a board to see as we move from an elected position to an appointed one and, and even larger so moving from Brian to somebody else? You know, we've been very fortunate to have Brian with us for 42 years. Um, 
and that kind of a transition, having one person being the institutional knowledge and basically the face of our treasurer's office for so long, uh, I think warrants you know someone who has uh, almost equal managerial experience. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, I think I think either way we would find ourselves in a good position. It's just a question of what we as a board feel, um, you know, would would serve the people of Burlington the best. Excellent. Um, what can I say? That I, I would I would like to just say a couple quick things before we go to the vote. Uh, first of all, it was my first uh, time going through interview process with any of the jobs here in town that we've we've put out there. Uh, it was quite interesting. Uh, Paul, you mentioned earlier all the people involved. Um, there's no need for me to go over them again. They, they did a fantastic job. I was amazed at the questions that you could ask and couldn't ask. Uh, it was very enlightening for me to sit there and listen to the responses. Someone that I thought was really good on paper, um, you know, didn't interview that great, but they were still a great person. Um, uh, I think that the board did a great job uh, narrowing it down to the two best candidates, which I think showed tonight uh, with their, both their interview processes that they were both very, very good candidates for this position. Uh, and it's up to us now to individualize and figure out who we want to move along and represent the treasurer's collector's position at this point. Um, once again, I just want to say thank you for all I learned about that job process, looking for that. So, Paul, thank you very much. Uh, I was glad I was on that. So now, do we just uh, ask for a motion to vote for somebody, or what's the process at this point? Uh, that's correct, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is a, a board appointment, so um, if, if one of the members could nominate one of the two candidates, and then um, we can move okay. forward uh, with a vote on, on that candidate, and a okay. roll call vote, uh, Betty has requested. Okay, great. So at this point, I'd take a motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Gary Giannino to the town treasurer slash tax collector's office. Okay, do I have a second on that? Second. I'll second. There we go. Okay, right. motion and a second. Um, roll now, call. All, what's that? Roll call, sir. Yep. Okay, now we need a roll call vote. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Hogan. Uh, Gary, yes. Gary. Mr. Priest. Yes. Gary? Yeah, that's from on, on the motion, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tiggs. Gary Giannino? Yes. Gary. Mr. Runyon. Mr. Giannino. Gary. Mr. Morandi. Gary. So it's 5-0-0. Zero, zero. All of us in favor of Mr. Gary Giannino being our new tax uh, collector on town. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and again, uh, thank you to everybody that participated in the search process, and, and thank you to Joanne for, as usual, setting up a very thorough process for us, and uh, we were well prepared, and, uh, you know, um, I think um, Selectman Randy has an appreciation. I know that Selectman Priest and, and, and Selectman Runyon uh, participated in the Economic Development Director search, and uh, it's a lot of work that goes is involved in it, um, <clears throat> doing uh, days of interviews and things of that nature, so... <clears throat> I want to thank everybody very much for the time that they committed to the process. <clears throat> well, I would like to say, um, first of all, <laughs> thank you to Joanne for enlightening me on the don'ts. Not the do's, the don'ts. <laughs> Don't do that. She was going to sit next to me, and she told me she was going to wear boots. So I'd like to thank her for not kicking me at all. It was wonderful. But on the other hand, i really like to thank Alex um, for... Um, given a, a, a great interview process for that. Uh, and I'd like to congratulate Gary uh, making the appointment for tax Um Mr. Hogan, uh, would you like to add anything before we move on to the next item? Bob? I'm here. Oh, yeah. I asked if you'd like to add anything before we moved on. No, I'm good with it. Uh, I think it, it was a good choice, and uh, I think uh, all will be well. Okay. All right. Moving right along. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up, we have an appointment in our fire department. Uh, ordinarily, uh, Chief Patterson and the candidate would be here, so I'm a little bit bummed out about that. But due to the current situation, uh, we'll be doing this appointment without any of the usual fanfare. Um, we are down one 
position in our dispatcher uh, division. And this appointment was really important for us to move forward in, in, with tonight, in, in particular given to the circumstances that police and fire are currently working at right now in, in terms of dealing with the virus. So um, this candidate comes highly recommended by Chief Patterson. Uh, Ms. Jody Gay is an APCO certified public safety telecommunicator, uh, an American Heart Association basic life support provider and is in the process of completing uh, her EMT certification this spring. Uh, so with the Chief's recommendation, I appoint Jody Gay to the position of dispatcher in the Burlington Fire Department and ask that the board waive its standard 15-day waiting period. And just a reminder, sir, we'll be looking for a roll call vote. Okay, so moved. Second. So we'll move to second. And um, Michael, do you abstain from this? Oh, no. No, okay. Um, so it's moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor oh, of a roll call vote. <laughs> Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Tigas? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Miranda? Yes. So it's all five zero zero in favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, next up, another um, agenda item related to uh, the pandemic that's going on. Uh, I'm going to read a statement. Uh, John Sanchez would normally be here with us for this. And uh, again, we've asked him to stay home. And uh, I will cover this agenda item. Uh, but what we're asking for is for the board to issue a water ban, a complete outside watering restriction, uh, similar to like what we've had to do in the fall. And I'm just going to read um, a statement here to, that explains why we need to do this at this time. Absolutely. Um, Although town meeting authorized the town to join the MWRA in order to supplement our water supply, the environmental approval process is not yet complete and the town is not yet connected to the MWRA water supply. Until that process is complete and supplemental water from the MWRA is available, the town will continue to provide water service only from its existing water supply. Uh, the town continues to operate two water treatment facilities. Since neither facility is designed to supply 100% of the water use during the warm summer months, uh, both facilities must therefore be staffed 24 hours a day in order to supply water to the town distribution system. Uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 global pandemic, the town must anticipate difficulties to staffing both facilities 24 hours a day. Uh, reductions in personnel during the COVID-19 global pandemic will force us to reduce staffing and shifts at the two treatment facilities. Uh, due to those anticipated personnel shortages, the town cannot operate both treatment facilities 24 hours a day and therefore very likely cannot supply enough water to meet the usual demand during the warm uh, weather months. Uh, with reduced demand on the water distribution system with an outdoor watering restrictions in place, the town anticipates that only one treatment facility may be needed uh, during these months. Accordingly, the town is implementing, implementing uh, this full outdoor watering restriction so that its staff can continue to provide adequate and sufficient water service for necessary and critical uses by domestic, institutional, and commercial consumers and so that we, we can prevent any disruptions in service. The town also keeps emergency water connections with our adjacent communities. However, the town is only allowed to access those connections after the town has declared a full outdoor watering restriction. Uh, I spoke to uh, Mr. Sanchez earlier, and this is certainly something that we can revisit in the event um, that we get through this crisis uh, with the pandemic um, and go back to our typical summer odd and even watering restrictions, but at this point in time, um, and given the possibility of um, personnel becoming ill uh, due to the virus or due to being um, isolated or quarantined, uh, we felt it was the best action to take at this time to ensure that we can continue to provide the water to the town. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we'll start with Mr. Priest. Any comments on this or no. questions? No, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. Mr. Hogue. Sorry. No, it's okay. Thank you. I thought you were done. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hogan, any comments? No, I have, I have, I have nothing to offer. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a shame that we have to do this so early, but uh, also with the fact that it's been a fairly dry winter, 
uh, is going to add to our problem. So uh, I don't have anything else but that to say. Okay. Mr. Tate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's unfortunate we have to even think about this, but it's a byproduct of today's world, so it is what it is. Mr. Runyon. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, that being said, I have no comments. I've already talked to Mr. Sanchez in depth about this, uh, in depth, not death, sorry. Excuse me, everybody. Um, but uh, I did talk to him about this. Uh, so I'm all set at this point, so I need a... Uh, is this, a, this a, another roll call? They're all vote? roll calls. Every tonight, one of them, Mr. okay. Chairman. So I have a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion and seconded by... Second. So motion and seconded. Okay. We'll start with Mr. Hogan. Uh, yes. Yes. Mr. Priest. Aye. Yes. Yes. Mr. Tiggs, yes. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Yes. Mr. Miranda, yes. So 5-0-0. Zero, zero. We're all in favor of it. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, the next up item up is uh, an item also related to um, the coronavirus and uh, what We've been working with the town clerk in terms of uh, obviously we're going to town's going to need to reschedule or postpone the town election. Um, the state legislature has worked out um, a process and it's awaiting the governor's approval. So the alternate process for that is for the town to go to court. So what we'd like to do is to ask the selectmen to vote to accept the legislation that's in front of the governor right now that we'll use in the event that he signs it and there's no reason to believe that he's not going to sign it. Um, but we'll also have, as part of the same motion, we'll ask the board to approve uh, town council to go to court to get a court injunction uh, to move it in the event that for some reason uh, the legislation um, is not signed in time for us to uh, postpone our election. So that's a summary from the town clerk. Um, she also wished to be here tonight, to, uh, but we felt that it was um, something that we should handle for her to just minimize the amount of people that had to come out of the house this evening. So I do have a motion. Uh, if Selectman Runyon wouldn't mind reading that motion. No, of course not. Let's see here. Mr. Chairman, real quick. No. Mr. Sagarino, just, just for clarification, is this a single vote or is it two votes? It's one motion with, with basically two parts to it, and it'll give us the flexibility to operate under the governor's legislation or in the event that he is unable to uh, sign that for some reason between now and then, I would allow uh, town council Lisa Mead to go to court. Uh, that's the old-fashioned way of um, moving an election, and uh, that's sort of our fallback plan. Okay. So we wanted to provide both ways of doing that um, with this one vote. Very good. Thank you. And we have no date set. There is a date in, oh, there is a date. in the article. Um, the state legislation required a date to be picked out into the future. And okay. again, um, once all this is, is clarified and the governor signs it, we should be able to have a better understanding um, of what options we have available. But for tonight's vote, um, the town clerk did select a date. Okay, thank you. Mr. Runyon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move that the board vote to move the municipal election scheduled for April 4th, 2020 to June 6th, 2020 in accordance with the proposed special legislation adopted, adopted by the Massachusetts House of Representatives and Senate this date. In the event the legislation is not signed by the governor by April 1st, 2020, I move that the board direct town council to seek an order from the Superior Court authorizing the board to move the election date to a day prior to June 30th, 2020. Thank you. Second. And we need a second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call vote. Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Priest. Aye. Aye. Thanks. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mr. Miranda. Yes. Five zero zero in favor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, once we get some clarity on what the actual process is going to be, uh, we'll be notifying the community of all the uh, updated dates and information and all that in terms of, um, you know, holding the election. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. <clears throat> okay, next up, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we did have some previously scheduled public hearings um, on our agenda, but uh, we wanted to postpone uh, 
continue those to a future date to allow for any public participation and hopefully to allow for the petitioners to come in and, and present to the board. So uh, for this first one is a new public hearing. Uh, if Selectman Priest could read it into the record. And then what I would like to ask the board to do is to continue that uh, to the meeting of May 18th at 6.30 for this particular one. So Paul, if I could ask, does it make sense for me to read this in and then make an immediate motion to continue? I think that's how we, when we typically uh, start these new, we do read the motion in. Uh, we read the notice into the into the record. Oh, I'm fine with reading it in. I just want to make sure that it's okay that I just go right into continue. <laughs> yeah, someone else can, but that, 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 okay. we'll continue to a, a, a future date. Sounds Bob to read it? Huh? Want Bob to read it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob. <laughs> that's all right. All right, here we go. Uh, the Burlington Board of Selectmen hereby gives notice of a public hearing being held on Monday, March 23rd, 2020, at or after 6.30 p.m. at the Town Hall, 29 Center Street, Burlington, Massachusetts, in the second floor main meeting room, in order for the Board of Selectmen to receive an update, discuss consideration of a transfer, cancellation, or revocation, and to vote on the continued status of the all-alcohol license of the now-closed Del Frisco's Grill of Massachusetts, LLC, doing business as Del Frisco's Grill, which was located at 92 Middlesex Turnpike, Burlington, Massachusetts. This in accordance with Mass General Law 138, Alcoholic Liquors, Section 77, which states that the licensing authorities may, after hearings or reasonable opportunity, therefore cancel any license issued under this chapter if the licensee ceases to conduct the licensed business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a, that's the motion, right? Motion to continue motion to, to continue. May 18th at 6.30. Chairman, I'll make a motion we continue that matter to May 18th at 6.30 p.m. May 18th, second. 2020. Second. Motion and second. Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Priest. Aye. Higgs. Aye. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Mr. Mirandi. Yes. 500. All in favor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Uh, the next up is the previously continued uh, hearing for the Burlington Beer Works. Um, and we would ask the board to vote to continue that to May 18th at 635. Roll call, motion please. To continue. I'll make the motion to continue uh, the Slezar Brothers Brewing Company to business as uh, Burlington Beer Works uh, f to May 18th at 635 p.m. Second. Motion made and seconded. Roll call. Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Priest. Aye. Mr. Tigas. Aye. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Mr. Miranda. Yes. Five zero zero. Favor. Passed. We have to read this uh, ad selectman priest on the next one. Uh, this was just um, to take a look at and make any potential modif modifications to the town of Burlington alcohol policies as a whole. Okay, and I'm just reading the, pub the public hearing part. Yeah, the, the, the same, same, uh, okay. same uh, la language. The Burlington Board of Selectmen hereby gives notice of a public hearing being held on Monday, March 23rd, 2020 at or after 6.45 p.m. at the Town Hall, 29 Center Street, Burlington, Mass., in the second floor main meeting room to discuss and vote on modifications to the Town of Burlington rules and regulations for the licensing and sale of alcoholic beverages and addendums thereof as well as to discuss and vote on any modifications to the Town of Burlington policy on licensing service of alcoholic beverages in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 138 and Chapter 140. Thank you very much. Uh, please continue to May 18th at 640. 640. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hogan. Yes. I'll make the motion. Oh, oh Mr. Chairman. I was I'll ahead make, of myself. I thought there was. So I'll make a motion we continue uh, the modifications uh, to the town alcohol policy to May 18th at 6.40 p.m. Okay, motion made by Jim, second by Nick. Second. Congratulations. Uh, Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Priest. Aye. Mr. Tigas. Aye. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Mr. Miranda, yes, Five zero zero in favor. Okay. Uh, the next item, uh, 347, Mr. Chairman, is just an update on town meeting. Uh, Warrants. Uh, we, the warrant, I believe, closes this upcoming Friday, so this will be something 
uh, that we'll be revo reviewing in more depth with the board at the next meeting. So there really is uh, nothing for us to work on this evening on this one. Okay, excellent. Question, if I may. Yes, sir. Paul, if that has to get moved, what happens with the whole, with, with the annual budget? Town meeting? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, uh, we actually have, uh, Amy and I are uh, uh, planning on speaking with the moderator uh, on Wednesday once we get the town election squared away. Um, there's already some pretty decent um, policies and procedures for moving a town meeting in place already so that the legislature doesn't have to create one. Um, at present, we think it's probably going to be wise. We will have to move the town meeting uh, to a future date. If not, um, for the fact that the uh, situation is probably not going to be resolved by then in terms of gathering in large groups, but also, um, you know, s some of our uh, committees have lost some time uh, in terms of having meetings. So at a minimum, even if... Um, the orders were lifted in terms of people gathering by May 11th. Um, I would anticipate that our boards and committees, like the Ways and Means Committee and the Capital Budget Committee, uh, the Bylaw Review Committee and the General Bylaw uh, Review Committee, um, would have some difficulty in meeting that schedule, given the fact that uh, most likely they've already lost a couple of uh, sessions of, of public meetings. Um, we're hopeful that uh, tomorrow night um, the Board of Health is going with the first complete virtual uh, meeting here, and we hope that that um, works out very well so that our boards and committees can start meeting in this way and, and sort of keep up with um, town business as we move as we move forward and, and you know, wait for the further guidance from, uh, you know, the state and federal government. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So at this point, we're on to subcommittees, right? So we're going to do uh, something a little... So I'm going to change it up a little bit tonight. I'm going to do my chairman's report right now. And then, gentlemen, if I miss anything as far as what I'm about to say, please just jump right in and, and uh, after I'm done and, and correct my mistakes, I'll say. Um, to the town of Burlington and to the Board of Selectmen, uh, number one, I would like to thank Mr. Sagarino for his um, ongoing work ethic of what he's been doing the past couple of weeks. If you people could understand the amount of phone calls, the amount of people that he's in charge of to move around to decide who's coming in, who's going out. I understand department heads do a lot, but it all goes through Mr. Sagarino's office. Uh, Paul, I'm going to say this straight out. Thank you very much for everything you've done for this town. Um, so far, we've made the greatest decision in hiring you for this position. I can't stress that enough. Um, as far as the department heads go, I would personally like to thank each one individually. Uh, you know who you are. I don't have to go over the names. You know if you're a department head or not on what you've done with your employees at this point uh, as far as putting one man in a truck, putting, uh, separating everybody by this distance of six feet, by uh, keeping the guys working the way they're supposed to be working. Um, the staff downstairs, Paul, with you also, keeping everybody going upstairs and down. Um, I, I would like to thank the police department. Uh, Chief Kent uh, has worked endlessly to keep the shifts going to if somebody was to get sick, they have it in place that if a certain amount of people get sick, they have different people that are going to take over in different shifts, and the guys have been fantastic about it. Mike, the fire department has been unreal. They get an update every day of what they have to wear to go to a house now. It changes back and forth. Um, Sometimes we, we take life for granted and we think that it all goes very smoothly and everything just falls into place. Well, this kind of rocked the boat for a little bit for everybody. Um, there's probably a lot of things I'm forgetting and I'm hoping you guys w would come into this and say a few things, but personally, uh, I'm here to just thank everybody in town, uh, these small businesses uh, such as myself. I'll be open until one time tomorrow and then we'll be closed. Uh, after that, you've got a whole bunch of places that are going to be hurting after this is over, financially, emotionally, uh, with people with kids, people that have apartments, people that have uh, single mothers, single fathers, whatever it may take. Uh, so please bear with everybody. Uh, please have the strength and patience to deal with everything you got to do. And uh, that's all I'm going to say at this point. Uh, um, I'll just move it off to you guys, and I'll start with Mr. Hogan over there. Mr. Hogan, would you like to add anything that I forgot or add anything yourself? Bob? Yep. 
Would you like to add anything about what I just said? Um, I, I, I lost part of that, Joe. For some reason, I was getting a lot of static there for about uh, 30 seconds. But I do, I do want to, uh, in addition, a acknowledge the fact that um, we've got some great employees and department heads, and it was nice to see people working together. And having spent 11 and a half years as a member of the Board of Health, I couldn't be more proud of the way our neighbors and friends who are serving on the Board of Health and the employees who serve us on a regular basis have been working um, through all of this to, to give us the best information, the most accurate information. Um, and it's, it's just so great to have seen how they all came together and, uh, and, and just took the lead because um, they were the ones with the information. All right. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Mr. Priest. Thank you, Chairman Morandi. Um, I think it's important that everyone watching or anyone that's going to watch this understands that uh, the social distancing, the washing your hands, the keeping services clean, um, these aren't nice to haves right now. Um, you know, I, I sit here as, as a young man uh, with a young family knowing that <clears throat> most of my family would probably be fine if we got the virus. Uh, some of my kids are immunocompromised, so they probably wouldn't be, but that also raises my next point in that there are a lot of folks in our community who can be very adversely affected by this virus, and it's not necessarily that you know, they're out running around and they're going to catch it, it's that someone like me, who isn't really paying attention or taking this seriously, is going to give it to them. Um, and there's, there's no reason to um, you know, put their lives in jeopardy. Um, you know, because we didn't feel as though it was important enough to exercise caution. Um, and, you know, the more folks get sick at once, the more likelihood there is of uh, adversely affecting our hospitals, thus adversely affecting the standard of care. Um, as we're unfortunately seeing in Italy right now, um, we do not want that to be the case here. Um, and so I just ask that everyone, you know, follow the guidelines that are being put forth by our state and federal officials. Uh, stay well informed. I know there are a lot of live updates. If you're ever on YouTube, there are constantly live updates from the governor and the president and, and, and their staff, and I, I highly recommend that you watch it. Um, you know, I completely understand what's about to happen to all the businesses that cannot be working remote. Um, and I can say I'm sorry, but I know that, I mean, me saying sorry isn't going to do anything. Um, you know, I know that our economic development director, Melissa uh, Tentakoulis, is working very hard with the Chamber of Commerce and businesses here in town to try and uh, figure things out and see what's happening on a national level, uh, if there's any support relief that we can be providing to businesses here in town. Um, so, you know, if you are a small business owner here in Burlington, you know, reach out to her, talk with her. She's actively, um, you know, doing, doing that research and putting in, putting in the effort. Um, just be safe, everybody, you know. Um, it, it feels like nothing is happening right now because you're probably healthy, your family's healthy, and, uh, you know, I just ask that, uh, you know, we continue to feel as though not much is going on and kind of let this thing work itself out. Um, it's unfortunate that doing nothing is something that we need to be doing. Um, but, you know, I also would say use this time as effectively as possible. If you're with family and you know you're sequestered together, spend time together, right? Uh, you know, start, play board games, you know, do activities. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of kids are still doing distance learning, which is great. Um, you know, try to carry on with life as, as much as normal as possible. I think that's really important. You know, when we're when we're stuck uh, like this. So, um, with that, be safe. Wash your hands. Um, <laughs> thank you to Paul and everyone for doing what you're doing. Uh, I know we'll be thanking you ad nauseum from now until the end of time for dealing with this unprecedented situation, uh, but it's true. You guys have been putting a lot of effort, and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful as a resident uh, to have the people here in town that we do uh, keeping us safe and keeping us informed. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess I'm just kind of <clears throat> echoing what's been said, but Paul, I've received numerous calls and texts and emails from residents and employees and I just want to thank you for your leadership. You've, you've uh, as Joe alluded to earlier, 
We hired you before hiring. You were our town accountant, and fantastic job there. But now you are the town administrator, and you're doing exactly what we thought we had. We we had a true leader, and the leadership you've shown uh, with the residents, the department heads, uh, and and the whole the town as a whole, it's it's. It's fantastic. What you're doing is fantastic. So thank you for what you've done. Uh, I want to thank the employees who continue to meet the uh, necessary needs of the residents, those that they can, we can do. They're meeting those needs. I'd like to thank the town as a whole. It, it, the response has been amazing. We didn't plan for this. We reacted to this. We're rea reacting to this, but we're reacting as a community, as a town. If you look at the Burlington Facebook page, the resident's Facebook page. A resident needs something. Two, three, four, five, six residents, I can help you with that. I get this. I, it's amazing how we come out for each other. And that's what it, being a community is all about. And one final uh, thought is we know certain businesses have to close, but certain businesses don't. I just ask the residents to, to support our local businesses that are allowed to open and do what we can for them because they do what they can for us. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Michael. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I guess uh, the, the silver lining uh, from what I've seen so far, and Jim sort of alluded it, alluded to it a, a little bit ago, our, our residents are, seem to be united uh, around this um, uh, situation. Uh, I, I see a lot of uh, creative things going on uh, on Facebook, scavenger hunts and other things. I see, saw some uh, some children had gone out and, and drawn positive messages in, in chalk on, on the sidewalks around town. So um, uh, I'm encouraged um, to see uh, those type of activities and I'm, I'm certain that together we're going to get through this and um, we're going to be uh, a much better community for that. Uh, I do have one uh, item of concern at the DPW, DPW and, and that are those those, uh, those Clorox wipes and those baby wipes. You cannot flush them down the toilet. They are not designed to, to go through the system and they're causing major problems with our, our sewer pumps. And if the sewer pumps aren't running, the sewerage uh, can back up and has backed up into, into some homes around town. Um, and especially in the lower lying areas. It's a, it's a real problem. Uh, I just wanted to remind folks that those wipes are not designed to uh, enter the sewer system. Please dispose of them in your, in your uh, everyday rubbish. Um, with that, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> before I go to Mr. Sagamero, <clears throat> sorry, there is one thing I, I, I did forget to mention. I'd like to thank um, Mr. Denizio for actually leaving his office because of the separation of yourself and him, uh, which people don't understand. If something was to happen to you, if you did get sick, Mr. Denizio does take over. So John, I know you're probably in your back room watching this and I just want to say thank you uh, for everything you've done also with, with, with Paul here and what he's done. And at this point, Mr. Sagarino, the floor is yours. Well, Mr. Denizio, uh, lucked out, he's in the COA library, so with a television, two couches, so I think he, <laughs> he likes it over there now. Uh, but really, just to get back on track, and uh, you know, I just want to thank each and every one of you board members, uh, you call, including uh, Selectman Hogan at home. Um, you've been nothing but supportive. You call me every day to check in to see what's going on, to see if there's any way you can help. And uh, many other member of the, members of the community do as well, and I'm very thankful uh, to have your support throughout this. Uh, it's been a pretty, pretty difficult uh, ordeal. Um, I will update on the current state of um, operations uh, towards the end, but you know, at this point in time, I, I need to tell you that you know, we couldn't do what we've done uh, without the department heads and the employees we have. I mean, we just have an unbelievable uh, team here at town. Um, everybody's been supportive. Um, it's been challenging along the way. People are frightened, people are scared. And, uh, you know, we've had to work through quite a few issues. Um, I, for one, 
Um, I think you guys know that um, I consider town, town hall and what we do here to be extremely important to the community. Uh, I feel like we do essential services here, uh, but that sort of leads to uh, the update on operations. As everybody is aware, um, the governor voted, uh, gave an order today to, to, for, you know, only essential services to be open, and, and therefore we've had to modify uh, town operations again. Uh, so in the governor's order, uh, essential services is for us is police, fire, and public works. Uh, so all other employees as of tomorrow will be sent to work from home. Um, they're going to be working really hard uh, to still continue to provide great services uh, while working from home. Department heads will be managing their offices and, you know, it may require uh, employees to come in and help us out with essential tasks. But for the most part, um, we're asking for the resident support and understanding that, um, you know, we're working under some different conditions now. We may not be able to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, but please do continue to reach out to us. Uh, departments will be checking voicemail, uh, checking emails, and of course, um, anything related to our most vulnerable citizens, please do call right away. Uh, and we will uh, do our best to uh, provide services for those residents. So it's been a challenge along the way. Um, very, again, very, very thankful for our department heads and our employees uh, during this difficult time. It hasn't uh, all gone smoothly, but again, it's uh, unprecedented times, and I think everybody's doing the best to manage, uh, given the criteria that we're working under. And uh, I can't, I can't thank our employees and our department heads and the board enough. Uh, just to echo on what Joe said, um, there's a lot of members of our community are hurting right now. Uh, layoffs, businesses are hurting. So if there's any way uh, that our residents can support local businesses during this time, it would be greatly appreciated. And again, I don't even have to bring it up because it happens all the time. Um, residents in this town look out for each other. And I don't, you know, I would just ask that, uh, you know, residents in particular look out for our most vulnerable seniors and those with medical conditions. Uh, you know, they might need groceries. They might need something picked up at the pharmacy. And again, we, this goes on every day in town without us having to make an announcement on it. But I think in this difficult time, it's, ex, it's especially important um, for everybody to look out for their neighbors. And uh, again, I appreciate all the support we've received. Uh, we, we're doing uh, the best we can uh, to manage through a very difficult situation. And, and you know, thank you for your support. Uh, the real uh, MVPs have been the Board of Health so far. We really couldn't um, have gotten to where we are today without their guidance and support. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sagarino. <clears throat> so at this point, uh, I, I think we could subdue with the subcommittees and uh, were there minutes? I put my thing away. Do we have to approve any minutes from last time? No, no minutes. No, nothing else? All right, I put my ship away. So at this point, if I could, yes, well, sir. Chairman, can we just ask uh, Selectman Priest is monitoring the live feed, which will be a oh. new uh, factor for us here if residents wanted to chime in with a question. Uh, I see one here that asked how Selectman Randy matched that tie to that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, appropriate for uh, tonight's conversation. But Nick, have you, have you picked up on any other... Uh, questions from the live feed? Oh, Paul, I was not ready for that. <laughs> um, I will say that a minute ago while you were speaking, I did just post next on the agenda is citizens' time. That way, folks, if they're typing a question, would have an opportunity. Um, nothing other than, you know, folks saying that they're watching and, you know, tuning in. Uh, so, I mean, folks, if you're, if you're typing right now, I'm giving you 10 seconds to, <laughs> to, to hit enter on that, on that key so we can see if you have a comment or not. But uh, otherwise, currently, there's nothing. You're trying to say they don't like it or they like it? That's a, I'm just joking. Was, was, it, was it a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> there was no guy. He, he just, he there just was no guy. I would take it as a compliment. I, I didn't know how to take it. I, 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 so I never know coming it, from so. Mr. Sagarino. Coordination is key in times like this. <laughs> and I your 10 minutes is remind, over. I, I just want to remind the chair that uh, to, to adjourn, adjourn if we can have a roll call vote. Uh, thank you to Selectman Hogan for participating at home. We really appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, uh, participate in this meeting with us. Well, thank, thanks for making the accommodation for me. Um, it, it feels good to be back into the swing. Yeah, don't get used to that either. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting up with your feet up on the couch, having a nice cup of coffee, watching us. <laughs> as, as I mentioned earlier, this is harder work sitting here trying to keep track of everything. Uh, it's, it's not an easy way out uh, being part of the meeting. This, this is hard work. Okay. 
All right. I'm, I'm not going to try it, but I'm going to take your word for it. If that, Mr. S Chairman, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second. And Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Priest. Aye. Mr. Tiggis. Aye. Mr. Runyon. Aye. Mr. Miranda, yes. Five zero zero in favor to block the meeting. Thank you, guys.